On the 80s, memory was expensive, and the first personal computers usually didn't have a hard drive installed. However, when they did, those things were big, heavy, and unreliable. Perhaps here it comes the name hard drive. On today's episode, we are going to test two Seagate ST225 drives with 20 megabytes of capacity and to use the MFM interface. MFM, or Modified Frequency Modulation, is a method of encoding digital data on magnetic media. MFM was used with early hardware, IBM-compatible PCs and Amiga PCs. It was also used on 3.5-inch and 3.25-inch floppy disks, as well as hard disks up to 5 megabits per second. One of the characteristics of the interface is that the disk used two cables to be connected to the controller, one for the data and another to control the position of the heads. This system was based on the floppy drives, but later interfaces like IDE or SCSI were built with the controller already integrated in the drive, so the double interface was not required anymore. The Seagate ST225 was the best-selling hard drive of all time. A 20 megabyte drive, capable of a 5 megabit per second speed and 65 milliseconds of seek time. It was not only the most common, but the one that lived the longest. A fantastic entry-level drive at a low price, reasonable performance, and very reliable. Released in 1984, perhaps this was the drive that changed the game and made hard drives an essential component for our personal computers. These two drives have been on my storage for more than 15 years, so at this point I'm not sure if they work or what they contain. Another issue is how to test them. They require a specific ISA controller, and modern computers are totally out of the game. So for testing them, I'm going to use my old 3x6 computer. If you want to know more about this computer, make sure to check out the restoration I did last year. But back to the drives. Something that I find fascinating from these devices is that when they turn on, it seems like a jet engine starting. As I was saying, I will need to find a way to make them run in this machine. And this is going to be more challenging than anticipated. Fortunately, I still have a couple of controllers that I can use. But as you may suppose, from here to making them run is not going to be that easy. This tandem computer comes with an IDE controller integrated on the main board, and this causes a conflict with the other controller. Ideally, I would need to disable this controller so the MFM takes control, but this can't be done via BIOS. It must be done changing some jumpers on the board, and unfortunately, I don't know which ones. After some research, I haven't been able to find this documentation, and the manuals don't go that deep. I got stuck here for a few hours, trying different BIOS setups and changing the driver's jumpers unsuccessfully. I really thought that I would need to find a different machine, but then I tried something different. What I did is disconnect the current disk interface from the motherboard and then restart the machine. 
As you can see, the BIOS does not detect any drive install, and this was a bad sign that either the controller was not working or the drive not detected. Then, I decided to boot from a floppy anyway, and when typing C, I got this surprise. Not only the drive is detected, but it seems to be working. The drive didn't boot on DOS automatically because of a problem on the configuration, but the thing is that it works and now I can see the files. It's very strange that there is no hard drive at all set up in the BIOS and it still manages to work. I believe that the MFM controller is somehow overriding the BIOS config. So let's navigate to the drive and see what is here. It seems to contain some accounting and payroll software. I don't remember how I got this disk, but it seems that it was an office computer for some sort of accountant of lawyer. This is a pre-internet machine, so back then data privacy and protection was not taken as seriously as today. Also, I am getting lots of data errors. With the help of Norton Commander, we can get a more visual look at the files. Here there are some documents that seem letters from a lawyer. So the best thing to do will be to give a full format to the drive. There are no bad sectors as the label indicates, but the format seems to be finding even more. Look, there are more than 700 kilobytes of bad sectors. Pretty bad for today's standards, but acceptable if we consider this is a 35-year-old drive with probably thousands of hours of operation. Let's move now to the second drive. Although I followed the same steps, the drive was unable to work. I can turn it on, but it won't show up a C drive that I can access. I even replaced the controller card unsuccessfully. The first drive worked with both controllers I have, so it's not a controller problem. Then I thought that perhaps the drive was not formatted, so I tried to run the fdisk utility, which returned an invalid drive error. That could indicate that the drive could just be dead or that it may need a low-level format. A low-level format actually does a physical format. It lays down tracks and sectors. Also, different controllers might be incompatible with the low-level format required from a different controller. And as I don't know the precedence of this disk, it will be worth a try. To do it, I will use the DOS tool debug. I am not going to explain in detail this tool, but just to say that I can run the controller utility from here, going to the right address. After a couple of tries, seems that the format started working and the LED of the drive turned on. Once the format is complete, I will run the app disk again. And bingo, now it works. Now I just have to create a partition and format the drive as usual. It was fantastic that it worked. And the format was complete without any error. Once this is done, I can now restart from the drive itself. And here we are, working like new. To finalize, I just want to copy a file to see how the speed performs. Check out how long a 1.4 file will take to copy itself in the disk. I 
think we went a long way from there. Well, this is it for now. I'm happy to have resurrected this old drive that are indeed a piece of history in computing. The high tech of an era. The first affordable, reliable and popular hard drives. Thanks for watching and see you next time.